Chris, the biggest one being Alex Petrangelo to the Vegas Golden Knights, who just continue to add to what is already an extremely deep and talented roster. Seven years, 8.8 average annual value. Um, I'm not going to call it a steal, but I, I think Alex Petrangelo is one of the most underrated defensemen in the entire league. And it seemed for a while like he was moving on from St. Louis. Um, they made a final offer to him, but he ends up going the Vegas route. And I, I want to focus on something that he said in his Zoom call that pretty much it's universally accepted around the league right now that no one wants to play in a place more than Vegas right now. And mm -hmm. who would have thought that three or four years ago when this was just a thought that a team would come to Vegas and be in the NHL? I mean, this was a five years ago, the concept of a hockey team in Vegas didn't even exist. And now we're in 2020 and it's become essentially the most popular destination for free agents now. And I'm not saying it's the most popular, but we've seen plenty of stars go there. I'm not calling Paul Stasny a star, but high quality players going there. Mark Stone, who was traded at the deadline, but had the opportunity to go to free agency if he wanted to, and instead signed an extension immediately. Mm -hmm. Petrangelo now. So many guys want to take this Vegas route. And it, it really, they deserve a ton of credit for building the foundation that they have. But I also think that a lot of criticism should go around the league to league's front offices to say, how did this happen so quickly? And how did we let this happen so quickly? Because building an expansion empire like this should not be this easy. It really shouldn't. I mean, this is a team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals their first year and has consistently built off that to the point where they are now likely the favorites in the Western Conference going into next year, similar to how they were last year. And they are also in a position where they are one of the most desirable destinations for free agents to go. And that's not a bad thing. Vegas deserves a lot of credit for that. But the main reason this is the case is because they are good. They are good. They're competitive. They've been competitive every year. They've been to the postseason in each of the first three seasons that they've existed. And the fact that that has been allowed to happen by other NHL GMs, it's honestly a disgrace. It, it personally, I think it's a disgrace to front offices around the, around the league because we've seen how long it takes in other leagues, even the NHL for that matter. Even Minnesota and Columbus, yeah, they still yeah. have to figure it out. For teams to be this competitive off an expansion, it takes a lot of time. And for Vegas, just like that, they're in the Stanley Cup final in literally year one. That, that That is insane. And the reason this has happened is because other GMs around the league don't know what they're doing and have allowed Vegas to build this empire. And honestly, it, it, it's utterly ridiculous how this has happened. And it's not a bad thing for the league. It's not a bad thing for Vegas. But it is a real indictment on who is running hockey organizations around the NHL. And honestly... I, I don't think Vegas deserves as much credit as they're getting because, yeah, it, it's not easy to build an expansion team, but it was made easy by other organizations, and it was made really easy. Yeah, uh, I don't disagree. I do think we have to give a little bit of credit to a couple of things. First of all, they've been very aggressive in getting these guys, right? They're paying them the top dollar. They're giving up draft picks and, and top prospects to um, Ottawa in the Mark Stone trade. They're outpricing teams for Alex Petrangelo. Do you think we have to give some credit there? You have to give some credit to location, of course. People want to be in Vegas. People want to go to Vegas. I think one thing you have to give a lot of credit to, which might be underappreciated, maybe I'm overhyping it, is these fans really care. They are selling out that – not anymore, obviously – selling out that building every night. It's, it's loud in there. It's, I know going to the – Cup final in the first year helps. I, I know that. And if they stunk the first year, it'd probably be different. We'd probably be talking about, oh, you can't build a fan base in Vegas, just like maybe you can't build, van, uh, build a fan base in Phoenix. But I think with great fans at a great rink, with this top dollar they're paying guys, you have, you have to appreciate that they have figured out a way to build a hockey team in a place where hockey isn't played before four years ago. Uh, Vegas was never a, a hockey hotbed. There was one, like, I don't even think it was an AHL team. It was like a junior team. Um, 
a thousand years ago and, and that's it. So I think you have to give them a little bit of credit on that aspect. Now what you're saying on every blaming it on everybody else. Vegas is going to fall in a hole here financially because not all of these guys are going to last forever, right? Mark Stone is locked up for an eternity. He's already 28 for nine and a half million dollars a year. Petrangelo is going to be 37 by the time his contract expires. And he's going to pay $8.8 million a year. The best value on their team right now is probably Shea Theodore, 25 years old at 5.2 mil through the 2024, 2025 season. And there's a couple of contracts that, that, that you kind of look at a little funky, but for right now, I agree with that they are the absolute favorites, certainly in the Pacific Division. They're right up there with Colorado as favorites in the West. You obviously can't, can't sleep on Dallas after what they just did. But those three teams, certainly the favorites in the West. And this Petrangelo deal just proves more and more that this team is really, success, really successful at figuring out a way to keep their guys and get free agents, which is hard to do in any league. And when you're four years old or three years, 27, yeah, four years old, as the Vegas Golden Knights are, it's extremely impressive. Um, you also talk about Robin Leonard signs a contract, five mil, five, five years, five mil per. So he sticks around um, in Vegas as well. Mm-hmm. And they're running out of cap space, but it doesn't matter when your team is that good. And, and they're able to put one of the best products on the ice in the Western Conference and, and will almost certainly win the Pacific next year. They certainly do. And I look at, Vegas right now and you mentioned it they, they deserve credit for building the culture that they did and, and building a hockey culture there and making Vegas a hockey town and and they deserve credit for that um because I I think that one of the big things that you mentioned is that Vegas became desirable because of the fans because of the location but that doesn't happen without them being good in year one immediately and they, they didn't even have to go to the Stanley Cup for that to happen. They could have just made the playoffs, and I think it would have became an insane hockey town right away. But they built that themselves. Bill Foley deserves a ton of credit, like you said, for going out and spending the money and investing the resources that needed to be invested for this team to not only be competitive but sustain a winning window for the next three or four years because it's certainly open for that long given that they have young talent. They have superstars who are right in the midst of their primes and locked up, no less, right now. George McPhee also deserves a ton of credit, too, because he's the guy that had to build this whole thing. But again, like you said, I think the best thing he did was just make moves with the worst GMs in hockey. And it shouldn't be that simple, but you have so many bad ones around the NHL that, honestly, it's almost become that simple. So that's where I'm at with Vegas. And the fact that they have built this so quickly, they deserve a lot of credit for that. But I, I think it's just as much an indictment of how bad the rest of the league is in terms of front office brain capacity than it is on what they've been able to do successfully. And honestly, I'm really curious to see how Seattle does because honestly, if, if these guys didn't learn the mistakes that were made from Vegas – I could see Seattle being good quickly if they yeah. get the right people in place. We also have to look at the rules for the expansion draft. They were different for Vegas than they were for Montreal, Columbus, Tampa, um, and all, Florida and all the other ones. Um, and that certainly helped them. But, yeah, I mean, highway robbery or Florida to get Riley Smith and Jonathan Marcheseau, so, the trade for Mark Stone, the now Alex Petrangelo, and William signing Austin, with Staturetti as well. Goes, the list goes on and on about and it. Goes on and, on. and props to them. I mean – that means, in your logic, which I don't think is flawed at all, that they have good people in their front office, and they're on the green side of the NHL as opposed to the red side, which is filled with Peter Trilli, Mark Bergevin, and the Florida Panthers. Yeah, it's ugly. But credit to Vegas. They bring in Petrangelo. They get better again. 